Alright everybody, BSG Joe here. It is time for chili. Um, so we're going to get into this. Um, there's a lot of ingredients, a good amount of prep here. Um, so it, it does take you a few minutes. I think total prep time has been about 30 minutes for me, but I've also been kind of measuring stuff out because, uh, well, I don't tend to measure stuff out. I usually am pretty good about eyeballing what it is I put in at this point. Um, but I got everything measured out and opened up. Um, you will want to have everything ready to go because as this um, kind of progresses through this recipe, it all goes pretty fast. So let's uh, go ahead and walk through the ingredients here. Um, so to start out, uh, we got our spices. And so you've got in the middle here, this is about two and a half ounces of chili powder. It's basically half of a four and a half ounce chili powder container. Um, so whatever that measures out to, if you got a large container, eyeball it. It's you know, about that much there. Um, so then we've got two tablespoons of paprika, a tablespoon of granulated garlic. You can use garlic powder, just make sure you kind of cook it a little bit longer uh, so that the powderiness uh, cooks out of it. Um, we have half a tablespoon of cracked black pepper. We have one tablespoon of cumin. Um, this over here would be a tablespoon of garlic, a tablespoon of, I don't know what that is. Oh wait, I'm sorry, that's not a tablespoon, that is a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Um, and then we've got about a tablespoon and a half of salt. Uh, guys, start slow with your salt. Depending on what beans you use, what um, spices you have, you know, kind of all that stuff, uh, how much more, you know, bigger your peppers or onions were, etc. That'll kind of determine how much salt you need. So I do start with a little bit in the rub and then kind of work from there. So moving on to the veggies. Um, over here, I've got one and a half white onions diced up. If you want to use a yellow onion, that works fine too. I happen to have white onions because they were on sale. Um, this is three poblano peppers. I did seed and devein the poblano peppers. Um, poblano peppers, if you haven't used them, are a mild pepper. So it won't add too much heat if you do leave the veins in. And, you know, kind of up to you how spicy you want this to be. Um, and then you've got right here one uh, green bell pepper that has been uh, diced up. And then here you have three jalapeno peppers, which you can see have been diced up uh, pretty finely. And you want that. That way it kind of melds into the chili instead of taking a big bite of jalapeno. Um, and then I've got three garlic cloves right here that have been minced up. So before we go too much further, let me talk to you about the peppers here. So I'm going to set this down where I can see it. All right. So you can see right here the jalapenos, they have a vein that runs through them. That vein... Uh, it's called capsaicin. That is actually where most of the heat in the jalapeno is. Everyone thinks the seeds are what's hot. It's really not. Um, you do want to take the seeds out. If you want to leave the veins in, it'll make it a spicier chili. That's fine. Uh, it's really up to you how spicy you want this. Alternatively, add more cayenne pepper or more chili powder as well. All those are good options if you want it on the spicier side. This one's actually going to come out with a little bit of a kick to it, but I have dialed it back from what I used to do just because I have kids and apparently you're not supposed to kill them. So that's what I've been told. Um, but yeah, for your jalapeno, uh, just basically what I did is I chop off this back half, take the seed out uh, with the capsaicin, and then you get a nice pepper flavor without all the spice. So just keep that in mind as you're going through. Um, also, I've got two cans of this chili, of these uh, Bush's Best chili beans uh, with mild chili sauce. Uh, by the way, it's labeled. You would think they have a hotter chili sauce in there. I don't know. I've never seen it. I've always seen the medium or the mild in my store. So uh, I couldn't really tell you if they do or not. And then right here, we've got two uh, large cans. One of them is uh, light red uh, kidney beans, and the other one is pinto beans, like you see here. So I use a mix of beans in mine, it works out pretty well. Um, here you have the remnants of two cans of tomato sauce and guys don't worry about keeping up I'm gonna put all the stuff in the description box below so you can get all that um, so you've got uh, two 29 ounce cans this is about a can and a half of it um, which we'll be using here just shortly and then you've got three cans of diced tomatoes it has been drained uh, from all the juice on there and washed off so you just have the tomatoes if you want to prep up and use some tomatoes that is fine just remember to take the seeds out of the tomato because it will kind of uh, leave too much of a strong tomato taste in your chili. You won't really get that chili flavor. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Same thing with your beans. Uh, they come in packed in this liquid. These are just canned beans. I didn't make these myself. You certainly can if you want to. Knock yourself out. I'm not judging you, but who's got that kind of time? 
So um, the beans themselves, just make sure you rinse them off very, very good. Um, and then uh, let them dry just in a colander like this or strainer, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's it. So that's your ingredients. Oh, also uh, not pictured here. I have about a pound and a half of hamburger meat. Uh, just ground hamburger. You can use 80-20. You can use 90-10, uh, however lean or fatty you want to make this. Uh, that's fine. If you are using a fattier cut, say a 70-30 or an 80-20 of the ground beef, then you're probably going to want to drain it before you put in your veggies. So, um, But that's it. So first thing I'm going to do, uh, which I will do off camera, is I'm going to take these spices and put them in a bowl and mix them up really good. That way I have them to kind of pour in as we're cooking along. So you'll want to do that as well. Um, other than that, I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to get the heat going on the stove. We're going to want to go to a medium, uh, medium, medium high heat as we brown the hamburger for the first stage. And I'm going to get the hamburger going and I will show you guys what that looks like uh, when we come back. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, we are back. As you can probably hear, we've got the hamburger meat going. Um, but this is my crock pot. This is a six quart crock pot and it will be full at the end of this. So just keep in mind how much you're making. Um, I know you say that's a lot. Hey, half the recipe if you don't want to make that much. Or you can do like I do. I make a big batch at once and then we'll actually freeze some and eat some and then we make some for lunch. And I'll show you that at the end of this as well. Uh, what we kind of do to make it uh, kind of portable for us uh, weight loss surgery patients to be able to just take out a little bit at a time and take it for lunch. So. Um, here we go. Uh, I've already got my crock pot turned up on high. I put about a half a can of tomato sauce down in the bottom of this and so it's just going. So right now we're going to add a little bit of the beans to it and then we're also going to add in some of the spice mixture. So try to do this on camera for you guys. So we're just going to take our beans and we're just going to pour in about half. Give it a taste. Whoops, about that much. How about that? All right, and then to that, we're gonna to wanna to add in some of our spice mixture. Like I said, just put it in a bowl and stir it up. So I'm gonna put in about a quarter of this. And really, we're not doing anything uh, crazy here, guys. The only reason why we're doing this is because it makes it easier when we're transferring in the pot uh, later into here. We've already got a base, it's already getting warm. And that's it. So if that looks good, we're going to go ahead and put the lid back on. And remember, this is on high right now. I've got mine has, uh, I apologize, I can't speak this morning apparently, but mine actually has a timer. So I set it to eight hours on high. And what it'll actually do is kick it down to low after that and then to warm. So uh, it's currently about 9 a.m. And so uh, by the end of the day, it'll be nice and ready to go. So I've got this on medium high heat right now, and all I'm doing is browning up the hamburger meat, as you can see. And it is much more difficult to do this on camera than in real life, so I'm learning the hard way here. Alright, so we're going to let this brown up just a little bit more. It's not going to be completely brown. Um, and then we'll add in our veggies. Um, and so before you add in your veggies, what you want to do is kind of take a look at your meat and say, um, you know, is this the size that I want? So I'm going to break this up pretty fine. Um, but if you want chunkier chili, leave it a little bit bigger. It's up to you. It's really, you know, individualized preference on a lot of this stuff for chili. So, um, but... We're going to break it up a little bit and kind of keep it going. And once we have it to about where we have it, then we'll add the veggies. So if you add the veggies afterwards, what you end up doing, or I'm sorry, if you add the veggies before you break up your, your hamburger meat here, then what it ends up doing is you end up breaking up all your veggies. So just kind of mixing this up. And actually, this is about where I want it, to be honest with you. So let's go ahead and I'm going to grab the veggies. So remember, this is all the veggies, the onions, the garlic, all the peppers, so everybody in the pool. So, and actually, I'm going to spill that all over if I try to do this, so I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to add those in, stir it up, and we'll be right back, guys. Alright, guys, and we are back, as you can see. Got all the onions, peppers, garlic, and now it's starting to really smell good. 
Um, as you can see, the hamburger meat is all browned up nicely and the onions are starting to get a little translucent. Um, the good news about this is we don't have to wait for all these veggies to cook down because it is going to uh, simmer a bit uh, on the stove and then in the crock pot, mostly in the crock pot. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to continue on with adding stuff in at this point because that's looking pretty good. So uh, first thing I'm going to add in are the two cans of the baked beans and chili sauce. And for this, you do want to keep the sauce because it provides a liquid um, to help cook things in. So we're just going to add that in. Alright. And if you leave one or two beans, it'll be fine, guys. Alright. Here's the other can. Alright. Sorry about all the shaking, guys. Once again, lone cameraman here. So... And then we'll go ahead and add in the onion, or I'm sorry, the tomatoes. The onion's obviously already in there. That is done. And now we're going to add in about half of the spice mixture. So, Alright, we're going to reserve just a little bit uh, for later in case we need some more seasoning. Um, but we're going to give that a stir. And so we're kind of just folding everything in together. Just get it mixed up really well. So, all right, so this is looking a little thick right now, which is fine because what we're going to do is we're going to add in some of this tomato sauce that we have. There we go. So that was about half. We'll set that aside. Uh, you will need some more of that sauce more than likely, so don't worry, it's not going to go to waste. All right, there we go. So guys, what we're gonna let this do is we're gonna let this come up, um, get a little warmer. So probably about five minutes, give or take, if I had to guess right now. Uh, so we're gonna let that, whoops, I just dropped everything. Um, no problem. So we're gonna let that come up to temperature and then we will um, come back to it and we'll start talking about transferring that into the crock pot um, and kind of moving from there. So let this come up and we'll see you guys here in just a bit. All right, guys, and we're back. So I went ahead and added um, off camera. Sorry, guys, I forgot the remaining beans that we had put into the crock pot. So the mix of um, kidney beans and pinto beans. So I went ahead and added those in, um, but I haven't added any more liquid or spice right now. So at this point, what you want to do is you want to taste your chili, um, knowing that some of the vegetables are still going to be a little on the crispy side. Uh, but kind of taste it and see where you're at. If you need to. Add some more of our spice seasoning in there and get it up to date um, or up to point where you want it. Uh, if you need a little bit more salt, add some more salt. Like I said, it's kind of one of those with salt, you have to feel it out because different brands of beans and tomatoes and stuff like that all have different amounts of sodium in them. Um, if you use more or less veggies, that will affect it. And of course, if you have the recipe, that will definitely affect it. So just kind of keep an eye on that. Um, other than that, this is looking good, so it's up to temperature, and we will go ahead and add this into our crock pot. And basically, we want to let it simmer about an hour, hour and a half on high, and then stir it up, give it a taste, kind of see where we are. Um, if you do get into the crock pot and you see that it is um, a bit too thick, then go ahead and add in some of the tomato juice that we have reserved. So you will use that as you kind of cook along. Uh, it will thicken a little bit. Um, and loosen up a little bit just kind of as the temperature goes up and down. So just keep an eye on it. Uh, make it as soupy or as hearty as you want. Um, add it in as you need it. That's really all you have to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get this transferred into the crock pot. I will show you guys what it looks like here once I get everything in and we'll kind of uh, make the final adjustments and then we're going to let it simmer. Like I said, this is going to make a full six quart crock pot. Um, so be prepared for that. Alternatively, if you want, you can leave it exactly how it is um, you didn't have to use the crock pot and just come put this on low and then just make sure if you are going to do this on the stove instead of putting it into the crock pot that you turn the heat down and you come and you stir it every once in a while because the um, ingredients will kind of stick to the bottom sometimes so just make sure that you're stirring it also if you have a dutch oven instead of a stock pot like this it'd be much easier to kind of get this stuff going however i don't have a dutch oven otherwise i'd be using it so um, I'm just using the biggest stock pot that I have right now. Well, the third biggest one actually. I've got two more, but those are for a different 
video, I guess. Um, so that's it, guys. I'm going to get this in the crock pot. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, tomato juice and spice to it, probably. Um, but I'll let you guys see that before we uh, cut away and let it simmer. Be back in a minute, guys. All right, remember when I said I was going to make a full crock pot full of chili? And you were like, <laughs> it probably won't be that full. It's a full crock pot, guys. All right, so here we go. Um, we got it in there. Um, right now, I'm not really going to add a whole lot to this. So um, as far as seasoning on there, it tastes pretty good. Um, the one thing I will say is I don't want to add too much seasoning at one time. Um, really let this sit about an hour and a half if you think it's kind of close to good. If it's way off, then go ahead and add some of that seasoning mixture that I told you about. Um, but right now, it's tasting pretty good, so I'm actually going to leave it. As this simmers, the taste profile, you know, all the spices are actually going to cook down and start blending together. So give it about an hour and a half. Um, also, right now, this is about the texture I like. So it's not too thick. It's not too soupy. It's kind of right there in the middle. Um, but it's a nice hearty chili. As you can see, lots of beans, lots of meat all through it. You got your vegetables. Um, and keep in mind, uh, for, you know, as weight loss surgery patients, you're looking at, um, you know, beans and meat in there. The beans are 68 uh, grams of protein per serving, and then the meat in there as well. I think ground beef is seven ounces of, pro or seven grams of protein per three ounces or something like that. So all good stuff in here. Um, and, and like I said, it's right where I want it. So I'm not eating a bunch of liquid and stuff like that that kind of fills me up before I get my protein portion in. So looking good there. We're just going to take and cover this up like so. Um, and like I said, we're going to give it about an hour and a half. So at about the six hour mark, we'll take a look at it, kind of see where it is. If you want to come by and stir it every once in a while, that's fine. Just remember you're in a slow cooker. So having that lid on is very important uh, to make sure that you're keeping your temperature in. So you don't want to do it too often. Um, other than that, I've got my uh, tomato juice and my spice mixture at the ready. I'm going to get some dishes cleaned up uh, before the wife gets over. Um, or gets home. Uh, she stayed at a dance competition last night, so I got some time to actually do this. Um, and we're going to come back, like I said, get the dishes cleaned up, get everything ready, um, and we'll kind of show you what it looks like here in just a little bit. All right, guys, and we are back. Um, as you can see, we're a little bit, a couple minutes shy of the six hour, or yeah, the uh, hour and a half mark, but I think we're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and pop the lid off of here. Careful as you will get some steam. All right, and this is what we're looking like. So as you can see, I haven't touched this since we put it in. Um, so we're gonna give it a stir. There we go. And this is actually looking pretty good. Uh, nice and hearty, uh, warm. Uh, it is currently like 35, 40 degrees outside, something like that. Um, so this is looking good. And good news is we started this around, uh, it was about 8.30 this morning. I started it um, and then started cooking it and everything. So um, it's only about 11 a.m. right now. So this will actually be ready about lunchtime if we want to dig into it. Or uh, since this is football season, it will be ready at kickoff. So um, I'm just going to take a quick taste. It is hot, so give me just a second here. All right, so I think that's pretty good. Um, I am going to think about it. No, actually, I'm good. I'm not going to add anything else to this. Um, spice seems on point. Salt seems on point. Um, it's pretty hearty, uh, kind of at the consistency that I like it here. Um, once again, if you like it heartier, add more meat, add more beans, add more vegetables. Uh, any combination of that and it'll make it heartier. If you do like it a little soupier, subtract some of the beans, subtract some of the meat, etc, etc, etc. Just work the other way. So, um, But that's it. So um, this is really done. Uh, what you want to do is just give it a little bit more time to simmer. So I would say probably another two hours or so. Let it go. Keep it on warm the rest of the day. And then you should be set to go for your chili. Uh, as far as serving it, I always put it in a little bowl, put a little shredded cheese on top, uh, maybe a little bit of sour cream, kind of depending on how I'm feeling. Um, and that's it. If you like it spicier, but you're cooking for a crowd that doesn't like it spicy, throw in some diced jalapenos on top of yours. All that's good options. Um, of course, um, for you guys that aren't doing weight loss surgery, we're just looking at the video to making uh, for chili. Uh, feel free to throw some crackers in there if you'd like. Um, eat it with crackers. 
Um, really, you know, the world is your is your oyster. Um, I wouldn't put oysters in it, but maybe some onion too. So whatever you want to do there. Um, but that's it. So we're going to put the lid back on. We're going to let this go about two more hours, and uh, it is done, guys. Um, at that point, just uh, take it off of high, put it on warm. Uh, if you want to keep it on low setting, that's fine too. Um, that's it. Uh, about every hour from this point, I would come just give it a stir. Uh, it's not really going to burn, um, but as you can see, back when I had the lid off, it does kind of uh, put all the liquid at the top, and the solids all kind of sink to the bottom, so keep it nice and stirred up. Um, but that's it, guys. So I will give you a breakdown here in just a moment. Um, but we're done. That's it. it nice and easy. Uh, you had about 20 minutes worth of work over there, uh, frying up your meat and veggies and everything, and that was about it. So uh, we'll see you in just a moment before the recap. All right, everybody, here's the meal prep I was talking about. So we got our chili, um, we had dinner, and now we've got a greased cupcake pan uh, with just non-stick cooking spray. And easy enough, just grab your little out, pop it in, put them about even with the top there, and basically just gonna put this in the freezer overnight and once it freezes up, just transfer them into a uh, freezer bag and then just pop one out for your lunch uh, whenever you want one and you're set and ready to go. So I'm just gonna fill the rest of these up. They go in the freezer. Uh, we'll clean up the tops just to make sure it's uh, easier to clean up when we do uh, finish out the pan. And that's it, there you go. Uh, you've got three, six, nine, twelve different servings of chili for you. Alright everyone, so we made chili today. It uh, wasn't very hard, so you kind of start off getting everything prepped. Um, go ahead and cut up your onions, your peppers, your garlic, and get those all um, just ready to go and ready to dump in. Uh, make sure you got some hamburger meat uh, that's ready to go. Um, for the hamburger meat, guys, if you want to throw in some sirloin or you want to get crazy, put some pork in there and knock yourself out. Um, just put some kind of meat component in there and help up the protein level of it. Um, if you want to use tofu, you're in the wrong channel. I don't know how that would work at all. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't use tofu. So good luck. Godspeed. Hope it works out. Um, but, uh, for the rest of you guys, you know, get that ready to go. Um, go ahead and drain your beans, your pinto beans and your uh, kidney beans. Uh, rinse them off really good. That liquid that comes in is kind of thick and, and I guess viscous. Uh, just you know, it looks kind of like a synthetic motor oil, so get that off of there. Um, rinse it off nice and well. Um, same thing for your diced tomatoes. Mine came in tomato juice, so same thing. Just uh, rinse them off. If you want to use fresh tomatoes, go ahead and do that. I have done that sometimes. It works very well. Um, you do, if you use fresh tomatoes, put in with your onions and peppers. That way it has time to break down. Um, and just remember, make sure you get most of the seeds out because the seeds on the tomato are the gloopy part and it'll add more tomato flavor instead of more of a veggie flavor to uh, your your chili. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, other than that, cook them down, get your veggies uh, just where they're starting to get tender and then go ahead and put your spices in, add in the pinto, the uh, uh, chili beans and chili sauce. Um, put that in, stir it up, let it simmer for maybe five minutes. Move it on over to the crock pot where we already had the tomato sauce and, and half the beans already going with some of our spice blend as well. Dump that in there. That'll make your crock pot nice and hot. Um, so it kind of helps us uh, bring up the temperature and speed along there. Um, and then just give it a stir and you're ready to go. Um, the one thing that I did want to cover is if you want to cook this just in the slow cooker, you can do that. Basically brown your hamburger meat then toss everything in, but you're gonna to need to cook it a lot longer. So let's say you're gonna be gone all day and you didn't wanna spend the time in the morning prepping and doing everything. Throw everything in the crock pot, uh, you know, brown your hamburger meat, go ahead and uh, throw that in, throw everything in, put your crock pot on the next morning, put it on high, let it run about eight hours and that should get you to where your vegetables are nice and tender as well. Um, if you're using an Instapot, uh, brown everything inside the Instapot, um, you know, as far as your veggies and all that good stuff, and then just move it over to slow cooker. Uh, once again, really easy, uh, simple, and doesn't make a big mess. So uh, you got options there. Other than that, like I said, I started around 8.30 this morning. Uh, prep took me to about uh, 9 o'clock. So uh, by the time I got everything chopped up, uh, all my cans opened up, stuff like that. It did take me a little bit extra as well because I was kind of getting things in line um, to shoot the video. Um, so my normal prep time for that stuff is about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, if you got young kids, 
have them open up the cans, pour it in the colander in the sink. Uh, I mean, it's all good stuff that they can do. Then you're chopping the vegetables. You can cut your prep time even uh, further down. Obviously, if you don't know how to chop vegetables very well, it's going to take you a bit longer. So uh, figure about 15 minutes to a half hour for prep time. Uh, about 15 minutes cooking on the stove, which was just browning the hamburger meat and getting the vegetables a little bit soft. And then a couple hours in the crock pot and you're ready to go. So we put it in the crock pot about 10 o'clock this morning. Um, about one o'clock is kickoff is when I'll probably go get my first bowl. It'll be ready to go there. Um, and then if you want to meal prep it, all you have to do is uh, what I do. So for weight loss surgery patients, uh, get yourself a cupcake pan. And then inside the cupcake pan, just spray it with a little nonstick cooking spray and then ladle in the chili into the cupcake pan. Let it cool for a couple minutes, throw it in the freezer. And then once it's in the freezer, um, all you gotta do is actually take it out, put it into a freezer bag, and now you've got individual servings of chili. So the night before you take, you put it in your bowl for lunch, put it in the fridge. By the time you reach lunchtime, it should be softened up enough to where you can just throw it in the microwave and you're ready to go. It doesn't take you know forever to thaw out or anything like that. Um, and if you follow me on Instagram, I'll get you guys some pictures of that. Um, one of the things that we typically do when we make chili, like I said, we're going to separate it. So it'll be at least two meals and then we'll put it into a cupcake pan. We usually do just one cupcake pan. So that's another uh, 12 servings, basically 12 lunches or really for, it could be a dinner uh, for all that, you know, if you want to put it in for that as well. So lunch, dinner inside those pans makes it really easy to work with. Um, like I said, you're just grabbing it out of a freezer bag, put it into a bowl, you got you a nice little half cup portion of chili that you can eat. So pretty good for people that are a little bit further out if you are a little bit closer uh, to surgery. If you are further out from surgery, like I meant to say the first time, uh, then if you need to grab yourself two of them, whatever, I'm not judging you. You know what you can eat, what you can't eat. Um, for you guys that are not um, weight loss surgery patients, but you're looking and watching the chili as well. Uh, get yourself two of them if you need, if it fills you up. Um, if you want, you can take and just freeze it in little individual bags and then just cut off the bags, whatever you want to do. Um, I know a lot of people as well, or another thing we have done uh, that will help out a lot of people is um, if you just take that next day, if you're going to have chili um, and you're taking the frozen portion out, put in your crock pot the night before, just put on low. By the time you wake up in the morning uh, to go to work, it should be ready to go so you can actually just take and ladle it into a bowl however much you're going to need if you're not a weight loss surgery patient. Uh, for us weight loss surgery patients, the little, cup, the little cupcake size portion is pretty pretty spot on and you guys can thank my wife from that for that. She's the one that uh, kind of came up with that idea and she does it all the time. So um, all winter long basically I can make chili a couple times and we'll have enough to kind of last through lunches and stuff to keep you warm when it's cold out. So other than that, uh, you know, Make a big pot in the morning and be ready. If you got friends coming over to watch a football game, you're set and ready to go. If you just want to put it in there in the morning, walk away from it, get back late at night, you've got you a nice warm bowl of chili to come home to. And the house will smell fantastic. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you would, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Make sure you comment down below. Let me know how you liked it. If it was too hot for you or if you had to add more heat to it, it's always funny uh, watching the reactions to it. Um, and just let me know how your chili came out and if you did anything differently. Uh, until next time, guys. I'm VSG Joe, and I will catch you later.